Hi there, I'm Joey. I'm Jacob. And we are watching Star Trek for the first time. Last time on Star Trek, TAS got all TOS, if that makes any makes sort enough of sense to me. Any sort of sense. I don't know if I want that more going forward. I might. I, I think know. I think a healthy blend of its own thing and the thing it was is a good way to go. Yeah, yeah. Like there have been aspects of TOS in previous episodes, mostly involving like things that our characters regularly do or did. Um, but even though with last episode, like her, I think you know was vastly different from how she would have been portrayed in TOS. No, she um, was very much a different kind of characterization. Well, well, overall, the episode I think was just TOS inspired, which is weird to say because this is, is just a direct continuation, realistically. It is. Um, Speaking of direct continuations and sequels, I'm very excited about today's episode. Oh no. Today we are watching an episode called More Tribbles, More Troubles. Oh, thank god. <laughs> so, Star Trek has predicted the future before, but has it ever invented a slang term before? A slang phrase? Because I guarantee you, mo' money, mo' problems didn't exist at the time. But what the fuck, man? <laughs> what is with this? What is with this? Um, <laughs> I don't know. My only hope, my only actual hope for this episode going in is that it is a direct sequel to Trouble with Tribbles, and I really just want to see the guy again that was selling them. He was a blast. Cyrano, that's his Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to see him again. As long as it has him, I'll be fine. It would be an automatic 5 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. With room to improve. Yeah, exactly. He isn't a 10 out of 10, but he brings it to but a 5. But he's five points of the score, is exactly. what you're saying. <laughs> um, Alright, uh, we're going to get into post-episode thoughts in a second. Be sure to join us then. We're about to watch Mo Tribbles, Mo Troubles. Ah, that was fun. It that was, was great. Fun. That was a really great time. <laughs> it, it hit my automatic 5 out of 10. Exactly, and, and then some, and then some. Um, yeah, Cyrano Jones is actually back, which I was both... Well, I mean, first of all, I'm very happy with because it's literally, literally the one thing I said I wanted from the episode. Uh, but also, I was incredibly surprised that they did that. that they brought back such a specific supporting character. I from know. Um, but then, I mean, like, I guess, the, is this like the first Star Trek media that made an episode sort of like based on its own reputation? I guess. Like, the first time that it was ever like so self referential. Because it's like, I, I mean, I guess, like, and we had like sort of like the Rock of Eternity Guardian thing. In, uh, in the, the Spock episode in yesterday. Right, but that was a different context and a different situation. Yeah, and that was sort of a Journey to Babel like, sequel altogether, but um, but not quite like this was. This was literally like, you kind of have to know Trouble with Troubles to get this. Like, you, you can watch yesteryear like on its own. You know, you don't need right. to know Journey this to Babel. This episode literally like makes like less sense if you don't know the first one. Yeah, yeah, like um, Kirk's relationship with Cyrano Jones. Um, the fact he hates him. Yeah, yeah, and Shatner's performance is very much the same as in Trouble with Troubles because you can just hear it in his voice that he fucking hates this man. <laughs> right. It's so funny. Um, I think he even plays it up slightly more because it is just his voice that he has to use. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like when it was TOS, he could at least use like body language and stuff. Mm -hmm. No, this is literally just his voice. You can hear the rage in his vocal cords. <laughs> it's uh, it's really, really funny. Um, yeah, yeah, their dynamic it hasn't changed. It's still really, really fun. Um, the triples are pink this time. So it keeps them consistent against the background, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Probably just also just wouldn't be as fun to animate tan triples. Yeah. I, well, I, I mean, they had various colors. I mean, think about how think about how often they were tan and brown, and the fact that. All of the grain is the same coloration as the original triples. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so they're pink to stand out against every background. Yeah, yeah. I love the bit early on in the episode when uh when Spock was like uh, he's like they're 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 going up against a Klingon ship and it's like oh they're gonna hit it's gonna hit us in four seconds. I must tell you, Kirk, that it's fascinating because it's gonna do this 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 and then hits this the ship, slams the <laughs> ship, immediately says it like okay like it's. We've had like funny moments in, in, in this show before, but like this is much like Trouble with Tribbles itself is more of an outright comedy, and um, yeah, and it plays into it. It very much does. Um, also, we finally get Klingons in the show uh, after being mentioned before. They're Indeed. actually they're actually here this time, and they have some kind of new weapon, like we alluded to. Yes, um, and also they're finally not in blackface because they literally can't be. But I'll I'll take what I can get. Um, <laughs> so that's nice. Um, yeah, that was great. Uh, I, I, I just enjoyed seeing the way that this show portrays Klingons now that they had a bit more of a reputation and like 
Uh, once again, like knowing its own reputation, like Star Trek is like playing on things that it knows that people liked. Um, Cause yeah, as far as I understand, like Trouble with Troubles was an iconic episode. Um, I believe, even at the time. I, I mean, I can't. I mean, I guess if it's, if, if it's like one of the only things that like got a direct sequel in the show, then like yeah, I, I guess that makes sense. Um, I mean, and with a couple years to really have like fans write in, get a sense of what they liked, mm -hmm. it wouldn't really shock me if like, like the the creative teams behind this show specifically mm -hmm. were like, all right, this is what they like, this is what we can work with. We yeah. have a starting baseline. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um... Uh, although that's not to say that they just like retread Trouble with Troubles again. Um, we get a, in something new in this one in the form of a triple eater. Um, it is literally a triples predator, which we certainly know it's just hanging out with. He has around with him just to like keep his troubles under control. Yeah. Um, which is really, really fun. And that um, ends up being a Klingon genetic invention. Yeah. Because yeah. they hate triples that much. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is great. You know, playing on, once again, one of those. Uh, really funny moments from the original episode. Um, <laughs> the, the, the the trouble eater at the end gets this really funny like literal ro roadrunner style like moment when it like sees the giant triple like splitting into multiple trolls. It's like, like peace, I'm gone. Can't away. have that situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I did like the idea of the the um, the larger tribbles as they continue to grow, like being colonies of tribbles, which I assume is meant to say that it's not just that. They got bigger, but they got bigger because the Tribbles were still multiplying inside, maybe? Or something along those lines. That's what I'm assuming it was. It's kind of like popping a balloon, almost. It's one of those things that, like, you know, like, you, you can't, like, be entirely sure what the episode is hinting out at because of the way the animation is. Yeah. You know? Like, you can't be entirely sure what it's trying to imply when that Tribble splits into, multiple, into like, that giant colony. Because it's like, oh, was it meant to be, like, the larger Tribbles we were seeing... Was a cluster of tribbles, or were they literally living inside the larger tribble? Because they're described as a colony. Yeah, and they don't really elaborate on that much. It's uh, it's it's, it's weird, but anyway. whatever. It works enough to be an end of episode like situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love just I don't know a lot of the dynamics with Serenio Jones. He doesn't get as much time in this episode as I would have maybe liked, but no, um, but he uses every second to his advantage. Totally, totally, and he is played by the, by the original actor as well, which is, which is really you fun. can just hear that. Yeah, exactly. Um, which again is just still surprising to me though. Like like TAS was able to get back not just all the original cast, but like whenever they bring back, it seems supporting characters as well. They get the original actors that did those as well, which is which is nice. Um, so yeah, once again, just. Counting down the days until we finally get to that Harry Mudd sequel. It's, uh, it's I'm not. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is um, just funny. Like I said, this was like Kirk almost seems to like Harry Mudd more than he likes Cyrano Jones. Right? Which yeah. is just funny. <laughs> which is ironic because I like Cyrano Jones more than I like Harry Mudd. <laughs> right? I know. Um, but yeah. Um, anyway, I guess that about does it. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, cool. We are five episodes into the animated series. I'm enjoying it. I'm having a good time. Yeah, I'm having a good time. Yeah. yeah. Be sure to join us next time when we continue Star Trek the Animated Series. Until then, this has been Joey Morgan. I'm Jacob. Goodbye.